Hello and welcome to the El Camino Studio. This is uh, the second lesson in an ongoing series. In this one we are doing page two of the Camino coloring book and we're doing it in watercolor. The Camino coloring book is a 26 pages of uh, coloring templates of the Camino Francais. It chronicles from the beginning to the end your 800 kilometer walk across uh, northern Spain from Saint Jean Pied de Port to S Santiago de Compostela in Spain. In the previous two uh, parts to this, we did we started with the uh, doing a the yellow washes across uh, the whole drawing, and uh, start then we went to the green, and now I'm just uh, at this stage I'm just finishing off with uh, the pretty well the last layer of uh, green on this. Once we finish with this, then we'll be getting on to the next colors required for this uh, drawing exercise. As with all the uh, exercises in this uh, project, uh, I'm trying to make uh, each one as uh, simple and uh, basic as possible and to be able to be done with the the most inexpensive and uh, minimal amount of uh, equipment because a lot of people they do not have uh, all the art supplies that they would like to have. So just trying to keep it very simple and uh, easy to accomplish. The Camino pilgrimage, it, uh, it uh, goes across uh, the width of Spain and uh, the northernmost sections of uh, Spain and it straddles along the mountain range. The pilgrimage starts in the east uh, just inside the uh, French border on the east side of the Pyrenees and uh, for the 30 days of walking you end up going every day you're going directly west and in you're always walking into the sunset. So when you look at the pictures you can uh, always tell if the uh, scene you're drawing is on the north side or on the south side by the uh, by the angle of your uh, light source. So in this drawing we can see that our light source is on the uh, right hand side so we pretty well know that uh, this view is looking south from the pilgrim's path. I did my pilgrimage in uh, the uh, latter part of the spring, so all the vegetation is very, very uh, green and lush. It still has that uh, primavera look about it. So, but uh, when you walk through the forest and or a landscape, you can see so many different uh, variations of greens. There's a uh, chartreuse and uh, bright greens and dark greens and every conceivable green. But in this uh, drawing we're not going to try to go too far into capturing the actual variations. We're just trying to keep it very simple and just do the whole drawing in the same wash of green. This helps to unify the drawing a little bit for the eye and uh, makes our job so much simpler. So the, now that I've uh, finished with the green I've gone on to a little bit of a, a darker yellow, a cadmium yellow and uh, this is a little bit uh, more golden than uh, the lemon yellow we were using to begin with and uh, now I'm going to go over all the areas that I've done in green and uh, sort of build uh, build up their strength a bit. Also I'm going to use this for the uh, the cliffs, the sand cliffs near the uh, upper middle part of the uh, right of the drawing. Normally when you work in uh, watercolors you try to use a, a heavier paper. The heavier the paper the less it's going to curl and uh, distort. 
So, but this is uh, probably, a, I think, an 80 pound uh, paper weight. And uh, normally for watercolor, you try to use the minimum 120 to 140 pound uh, weight. So, the weight of the paper is, uh, rule of thumb, is a, a cubic foot of paper would weigh 140 pounds or 80 pounds. So the lighter the paper, the more sheets you would get. So that that's, so you can always tell the higher the weight of the paper, the heavier the paper is going to be. In the last video, I uh, was talking about uh, my uh, brush stroke, and uh, I try to when I uh, load my uh, brush with the color, I try to do the I was said I was try to do the darker side of the tree first because uh, there's more saturation and uh, in the brush and uh, the more I use the brush the the thinner and lighter the uh, saturation gets so I tend to work from the dark side of the tree towards the light side of the tree and the same thing I'm going to do with uh, the sand uh, cliffs here that I'm doing the darkest uh, shadows first and uh, with a drier brush ending up on the light side. I, uh, before I went to Spain, I never realized how much, uh, how much wine came from Spain. I grew up, we didn't have that uh, much exposure to Spanish wine. But uh, there are beautiful uh, landscapes to draw because uh, the straight lines they give you they give you easy identifiable vanishing points and that uh, helps to make your mind understand what's going on in the landscape very easily I've noticed in some of the drawings that uh, if you don't have these uh, man-made uh, lines that give these vanishing points then you're awash in this uh, sea of green and you have to actually look at the drawing for a minute or two to really start to separate all the uh, disparate objects and uh, get an idea of what uh, the terrain actually looks like so this makes these vanishing lines these lines say uh, make it very uh, simple and quick to understand. If I don't have this uh, quick little uh, tool, then uh, it's in drawings I sometimes use uh, a similar tree. And I do that uh, in the foreground, a similar tree in the middle ground, and a similar tree in the background at a bit of a diagonal. And that, uh, that imposes a a form of a vanishing line for me and that helps to organize an otherwise chaotic drawing. It's not just trees that uh, or buildings that have uh, light and dark sides. The flat uh, landscape has undulations and high points and low points and uh, here I'm uh, using a thinner wash of uh, yellow to sort of bring out these highs and lows. It's like when you look at a, uh, a sheet uh, blowing in the wind, you can see the, the curves, the slight curves, the there's real subtle variations in light and dark. And here we have to sort of look at the clues that are in the picture and do the same thing and try to always remember our light source and uh, with a slightly darker wash over the areas that are further away from the sun. Most of us have grown up with uh, seeing full color movies and uh, color television. And uh, once you start looking at some of the older black and white movies and the older black and white TV shows, that uh, you can uh, really get a better appreciation for these subtleties of light and dark and uh, 
textures. There's so much more texture that you can see in a black and white movie than that they get lost in the busyness of the colors that you're seeing. In uh, the third uh, portion of uh, the series, we're going to be doing another scene from the Camino and uh, we're going to do that one in uh, just with uh, a basic black and white pencil. And uh, that'll uh, be an interesting challenge to try to bring out uh, all the subtleties of shape and uh, the subtleties of turning color into black and white. But for now, I'm just going to slowly work my way across and get uh, get uh, done with uh, my uh, yellows. If you find that you have uh, oversaturated uh, a small area and you don't want it quite that strong, what you can do is with a, uh, a clean wet brush just uh, moisten the area that uh, you want to correct and uh, with a paper towel just dab onto the paper and it will it will remove some of the uh, some of the pigment and it'll help soften soften it again you can keep uh, wetting it and uh, keep dabbing until you get uh, the result that you want this uh, really doesn't uh, damage the paper in any way if it's just a very small area, what you also can do is just uh, get a wet, clean brush and uh, dissolve the little area and uh, start spreading it around a little bit and, until it's uh, diffused into the surrounding portion. You have to be a little bit more careful with this because uh, the brush does tend to tear at a microscopic level at the paper. So this one you have to be very gentle with. So it's, it's always a good idea to start uh, light and go back and uh, work on it again because uh, the paper is very easy to be damaged. And once it's damaged then when uh, it doesn't have the same absorption as uh, surrounding and you'll have dark blotches and it it's always better to work light and uh, than trying to repair something. Repairing is always three, four times as much work as uh, as the actual painting itself. Okay, we're getting close to the end of this uh, third part, uh, so I'm just gonna slowly wrap it up with uh, the yellow. Don't be afraid to uh, stop and move on to something else because you we're using uh, very basic colors so you can always come back and add to it. So that's it for this one. I hope you hope you you uh, watch the last uh, completion of this drawing and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next one.